For us, this is something really special, a once in a lifetime experience. There's nothing else like it. Um, I'm here just to kind of live and breathe Shakespeare for two months. It's just a transformative experience. It's been one of the best things I've ever done in my college career, pretty much my life. Shakespeare at Wyndell began in 1970. Um, James Ayers, who was the founding director of the program, was teaching English here at the University of Texas, and he wanted to have his students explore Shakespeare's plays through performance. He was introduced to Miss Ima Hogg, uh, one of the great uh, benefactors of the state, who uh, had given the university the Wyndell Historical Center properties near Round Top. And uh, Miss Ima showed Doc Ayers the barn on the property, and they noted that it had many features in common with an Elizabethan playhouse. And he decided to start bringing his students out to Wyndale to explore the place through performance. But gradually, uh, over the first years of the 70s, he, he turned it into a uh, residential program in the summers there. It's now um, become something of an institution over 43 years. I think part of what makes Windell so special is its history, and it makes me so happy to be able to learn about the previous summers of Windell, um, people who have done the class before, and hear their stories, and what their experience was like out there, and how that compares to mine. It m makes it more special to feel like you're a part of this thing that's been going on for a long time. For the past 13 years, UT English professor and Shakespeare at Wyndale director James Lowland has spent his summers in Central Texas, just outside of Round Top. For two months every summer, he directs a group of students whose sole focus is on Shakespeare. They live it, breathe it, study it, and of course, perform it live on stage. But before the lights go down in Wyndale, there is a process. For Lowland, that process includes molding a diverse cast before heading out to this secluded Texas farm. Most of us aren't theater majors. Uh, you know, we're coming here for an English program. We have different majors. We're gonna go do different things in life. And for us, this is something really special, a once in a lifetime experience to just really dig into these plays and get that close to a cast. Stage his course and so return home, where such as bear his absence, but with grief, I mean his friend and nearest companion. One of the reasons that I think Wyndale is so effective is that you get a bunch of people who aren't necessarily actors all together and working on the plays in a really specific way. We're students and we work jobs and we're really busy and we do so many different things with our lives. And to be able to sort of put that all aside and just focus on one thing, it's gonna be a real big detox for me, that's for sure, after being so stressed out for so long. But it's also just, it's really, it really feels good to get that sort of focus back. Once the cast is chosen, the first order of business is memorizing lines and assigning roles. There are four plays this summer, and every actor will have parts in every show. With only six weeks before opening night, time is critical, creating a bit of anxiety for Wyndale's leader and the actors. I'm always nervous every summer. Um, it's, uh, there's a strange, feeling when you're about to embark on this kind of a journey um, and know that you know every waking moment is spoken for um, and that you have responsibility for you know this this group of young people who've dedicated their summer to this enterprise it's um, it's nervous but it's it's terribly exciting I am really excited to be going out there actually it's it's just a totally different experience getting to be out there as opposed to like being in the city or working in a theater because even though you're isolated from everything, uh, you might think that it might be really boring, but it actually allows you to get more specificity in your work. You become really close to the people you go out there with and 
it's, I just can't wait. <laughs> I'm really excited. I'm nervous about meeting everyone and seeing how we all sort of get along as a group and how we mesh as a cast. And because there's four different plays, we've all got a lot of roles to fill out. Um, so I'm really interested to see how those dynamics work. I know it's not really going to be real until I get there. Uh, I'm really excited about it. I've been excited for a long time. I've known about the Winedale program since I was a freshman here at UT, and I can't believe it's finally happening. On June 8th, 17 students, all from various walks of life and with varying degrees of theatrical experience, leave the comfort of their college community for a summer off the grid. It's called Shakespeare at Wyndale, and for two months, it is a tunnel vision focus to a community, a team, a theater, and to Shakespeare's language. It's really a nice change of pace to get out of the city and come out to this really calming, tranquil setting uh, and to get away from the stresses and responsibilities of daily life and be able to focus solely on one thing that we're all really passionate about. Well, the isolation definitely helps build a sense of community between all of us, uh, which is vital considering we're staging uh, four Shakespeare plays within four weeks. It requires an immensely close relationship uh, with the people that you work with. You're isolated from the rest of the world. <laughs> so it's a way that you can live with the language. So you can go out by the lake here and say your lines, and, and the only thing you're hearing are the sounds of nature and your own voice. Shakespeare wrote a lot about nature. Um, he's a very pastoral writer, so it kind of fills the language when you're able, when you reference birds in a speech, to hear them actually as you're working on them. While it is peaceful, there's still a lot of work to be done and a limited amount of time to complete the enormous list of responsibilities. There is no technical staff. Um, the students uh, do all the, you know, costumes, props, lights, uh, anything like that that's required for the performance is done by the members of the class. We usually wake up early in the morning, around 6.30, and we do sports, uh, we have breakfast, um, we sing before every meal, and then we usually work in the barn, um, which is where we perform the plays. James sometimes has us do tasks like fixing the lights in, in the barn for the stage or, or working on the stage itself. All of us have to learn about four to 500 lines of Shakespeare uh, between all of us and between all these four shows, that's a lot of cues to, memor to memorize, a lot of blocking, uh, and just realizing that you have to keep all of that in your head uh, to perform these plays uh, a couple dozen times. Uh, it can, yeah, it can lead to some late nights uh, where you'd rather be out running your lines than uh, getting an extra hour of sleep. James Lowland was a student at Wyndale in the 80s and has been director for the past 13 years. With nine veterans returning, he knows this group has more experience than other Wyndale troops, but that experience also creates higher expectations. I think it's gonna be a terrific group. It does have um, a fairly large number of students who are returning, either have done the spring version of Shakespeare at Wyndale or actually have done a previous summer. And that's one of the reasons um, that I am feeling good about doing four plays instead of uh, usually we do three. And so I'm counting on the uh, experience of the veterans to uh, help us um, put that together. Your first summer, you spend a lot of time getting to know the routine of the day. And so going out there for a second time, you're able to help all of the newcomers learn about the routine and pass on the traditions of Winedale that way. We do have really high expectations for ourselves and for each other uh, being part of a group because it's true. If someone doesn't know their lines, then that slows down our process for everyone. And we try and establish what those expectations are as early as possible in order to make sure that everyone's on the same page. And uh, that's one of the roles of the returners who have done previous summers. And so that's put a very different dynamic on the class because about half of us um, have come into this already knowing 
you know that we're going to have to work hard, you know, like 13, 14 hour days. And um, the rest of the class is still kind of, tr you know, trucking up to that point. With opening night only 10 days away, and the temperatures at the Central Texas farm consistently over 100 degrees, nerves become a little frayed while pressure mounts. There's always a point, uh, you know, a few weeks in where everybody uh, starts to get really tired and the heat starts to get bad and, and so forth. But the students are working closely in a you know, relatively small group, living in close proximity. And all of those things uh, lead to very close bonds among the class and to uh, a particularly deep level of understanding of the plays and the language. It's like one really long speech by the king, then one really long speech by Hal, and then tentative reconciliation. It's in a complete team effort that if one of us is slacking off, it affects everybody else in the group. That if one person is late, all of us are late uh, waiting for them to, to move on to the next stage in our schedule for the day. It definitely challenges students in kind of all aspects of their lives, um, uh, intellectually, emotionally, physically, and creatively. And that, again, contributes to the way the ensemble works together, um, that having been through all this and having you know, suffered in the heat and uh, worked together for long days and living together and so on, uh, builds a sense of trust in the group and an ability to work very well together, both on and off stage. It can be kind of awkward at times, trying to get to know each other, and we're around each other all day, every day. And so we become really close really quickly. And yes, at times, of course, it can be trying when you're exhausted and cranky and just want five minutes alone, but you are surrounded by the same people you've been around for weeks and weeks. But at the end of the day, we're all here because we have something in common. The main force kind of keeping everything together is James. Um, he's very calm, cool, and collective. Um, and he, um, in those moments when uh, people um, aren't getting along or uh, just have a problem with one another, um, he remains kind of the force that is kind of like stabilizing the group. We really quickly become like a family and that doesn't just mean we're close. I mean, it means there's in a family, there's fights and tension and friction, but in the end, these are the people that you can depend on most. And even though there might be, uh, you know, tension arguments, uh, heat between people. At the end of the day, we know this is a place where everyone is loved. And knowing that everyone is there for us and everyone cares for us, it makes for a very um, tight and intimate connection with people. Shakespeare at Wyandale is many things. In general, it's a life-changing experience and a constantly evolving journey. But at its core, it's one thing very specific. It's a barn, and it's in this barn where these UT students bring Shakespeare's words alive for 24 performances over 16 nights. The barn at Wyandale is a, a beautiful old structure, um, you know, built from these great uh, cedar timbers that were cut down in the 19th century. Over the years, the, the barn has kind of evolved. We've given it more of the, uh, the features of an Elizabethan theater, but it's still definitely a barn. Being out here in the barn and in nature uh, is just really good. Uh, it, does something to the spirit and like I guess it imbues you with some kind of energy and it really allows you to like build something um, that is kind of new, um, kind of unlike in any sort of other indoor space. My goal is to help the students uh, understand the plays by performing them in conditions that are at least analogous to those in which they would originally have been performed. No amplification, we tend to use costuming that approximates uh, the kinds of things that Shakespeare would have done. We use very little in the way of scenery. Uh, we have a permanent set that's very similar to the one that there would have been in the Globe Theater. Opening night, and Shakespeare's Comedy of Errors is now just hours away. 
bringing about an even mix of excitement, nervous energy, and transparent anticipation. Hi, what can I do? This is always a, a kind of a poignant moment for us. I mean, it's very exciting uh, to have reached our opening night. Now it's we're you know opening our doors to the public and sharing the work that we've done. And I think that's, uh, it's very exciting, but also it's kind of daunting. And, you know, I think probably the students are a little bit nervous about having reached that phase. A lot of the work uh, that we came out here to do, we've now done, and now it's more about sharing it with other people. Remember what we worked on this morning in 1-1 in terms of the, you know, getting the, the reactions into it early. There may be laughs, there may not. Don't let those uh, worry you, um, but there definitely will be by the end. So this is it. We're now moving into the next phase of the summer, and I really en have enjoyed spending the time that we've been able to spend together and this audience will have fun with you i can there's a really nice atmosphere there's like i've talked to a lot of people who are just super excited to be here on your first night yeah so let's go do this uh we'll do three six nine we'll have about five minutes three six nine the goose drank wine the monkey chewed tobacco on the streetcar line the line broke the monkey got choked and they all went to heaven in a little rowboat Welcome to the opening performance of the 2013 season. Uh, we're delighted to have you guys here for this evening's performance. And please enjoy the Comedy of Eric. My gold, quoth he. My mistress, sir, quoth I. Hang up thy mistress. I know not thy mistress. Out on thy mistress. <laughs> Do you hear, you minion? You'll let us and I throw. I've got to back you. But you said no. With her, I lived in joy. Our wealth increased by prosperous voyages I often made to Epidamnum. I was actually terrified of like, you know, when I, when I walked out there and saw the audience, but I felt like that the, the crowd like gave me courage somehow. Like, I mean, so it fueled like what I needed, I think. Oh, time's extremity. Hast thou so cracked and splitted my poor tongue? I kind of felt my heart thumping in my chest. Once I got up there and, uh, you know, like with the crowd reactions in the first scene, I, I don't know, I felt great about it. I thought everyone did a great job. We came into the world like brother and brother, and now let's go hand in hand, not one before another. I think we've become a family, I would say. Um, at first, it was kind of a little weird because there are a lot of people together. I mean, there were 17 people together who kind of know each other. Some people are more friends, and some people just don't know the other people. After some time, I mean, it all worked out. We learned to be kind to each other and to be firm and also like to give good notes and to be a good audience and a good performer because other people are watching you and depending on you. So. The performance is never great if it's just one person like being the star and doing the best. Everybody has to do their part. And so we've all learned that together. We've all worked on that together. And that comes out in our performances, and I think that's great. When birds do sing, hey, ding a ding ding, sweet lovers love the spring. It's called Shakespeare at Winedale, a UT English course with a 43 year old tradition. For 17 UT students, it's a transcendent opportunity to put aside all creature comforts of life and focus exclusively on Shakespeare. With 24 performances over four weeks, the commitment becomes all encompassing, making the payoff extraordinary. The students uh, give a great deal of themselves to do this program. Um, they are committing uh, essentially their entire summer and working in sometimes very demanding and uncomfortable conditions, but they do have a lot of fun um, and they do get a chance to unplug a little bit from uh, the, the modern world and uh, I think that's very valuable uh, for uh, a lot of them. 
Coming into college uh, is hard. Um, coming in from, you know, the size of high school I did and then coming into like, you know, 50,000 other kids my age, it's, it's hard to find a group that you can feel secure with. And, um, and I had been missing that for about two years, but then uh, I decided to come out here and it solidified just a whole network of people I had no idea existed. And, you know, they were all exactly what I was looking for. A lot of the audience members and uh, family members, they'll come out and ask, how do we do it? Like, how do we, how do we memorize the lines? How do we keep all our characters and all our movements in our heads? Uh, and we all just say, we just do it. Do him all the great and good I could. Go, some of you, knock at the Abbey Gate and bid the Lady Abbess come to me. But then at the end of the day, you can come back and sit back and relax with all your friends and complain together and laugh together and having that, that group to share the struggle and the hardship with you, it makes for a very um, tight and intimate connection. After two months at this Texas farm, it's time for the cast of 2013 to say goodbye, but Windale will always be close by. It's always uh, something of a sad time um, leaving Windell at the end of the summer. You know, it's, we're, we're tired and it's kind of, you know, it's the right time to be reaching the end of something. Um, but it is, uh, it always is very um, emotional, I think, when the students are, are getting ready to leave. At the end of the summer, we go back to what we call the real world. Um, we still all only want to be around each other, the bond that we, grow and cultivate out here stays with us once we get back uh, to Austin and the outside world as well. A lot of us will, we call it Windale woes, where we just, we want to go back to Windale and we don't want to like, um, kind of mess with the people and, and the traffic and, and the sounds of the city. Um, but uh, yeah, it's going to be really hard. Um, and it takes about, uh, I don't know, sometimes it takes up to like half a year to get used to real life again. I think they, they come to realize the importance of the traditions at Winedale over the, the course of their summer. So I do want them to feel the importance of that tradition, but I also want them to feel that they're adding to it, that their, their summer experience is unique and that they're part of that history with what they do every day. I think the biggest thing I'm gonna walk away from Winedale with is a new, really deep and profound appreciation and love for Shakespeare and for his stories. Maybe 40 years from now, we might be reading Shakespeare to our grandkids. And to me, that, that might be the most important thing I feel like I'm taking away from this, is that relationship that I now have with Shakespeare and with his texts. In a lot of ways, um, it's been a really nice, like, escape. It is really a place where I feel like I can pursue with great intensity something that I'm interested in. It, it really feels like just getting away, and I think that that is something that I've been really craving for a long time now. It's one of those things where it's, you know, you're leaving Winedale, but Winedale's always gonna be with you. This experience is always gonna be there, and it's, you know, it has impacted us and influenced our lives and changed things for us, so it's not something we can easily, you know, forget. This has definitely been a transformative experience, working, this hard for this long on something is definitely, I think it has made me more familiar with how I handle stress, what I love, what I don't like, how I function in a group, um, and has just also given me new friends and new plays and things that I love that I didn't love before that I now will have with me for the rest of my life.